Hello. Time for packet five. Test. One more after this. And you made it through physics. All right, here we go. I cannot dilly dally around because I only got an hour. Whoops, I'm going to set the count down here. I only got, you probably can't read that, but I got 50 minutes, 58 minutes and 54 seconds to get through all this material. And so uh, here we go again. Uh, this is the uh, going to be what the test pretty much like this. I've changed the numbers around. There's a few, few I've held back a few things, but uh, it's pretty close to being this. All right, so uh, I'm going to work through enough of the problem to get you to understand. Then I'll probably show you the answer. So in case it's why you're watching, just to check your answers, you can do that. Um, <clears throat> so on this first one, you want you got to do a little small graph. This came from the quiz. If you look back at your quiz five, we worked this one, uh, one like this. Well, the force here is negative five over seven up. So it's sort of a sketch. Didn't put numbers on this one. You might probably won't have time on the test to put it either. So negative five over, there's my F, I'm gonna label that. And then my force here, sorry, my, my position is changing. And from the origin, I'm going nine I and four down. So something like that. And there's my S is what I called it. You can call it a lot of things. And so it looks like the force is probably going to be negative. I should get a negative work out of this because the force is always is not helping motion. My motion's from here to here. My force is pushing back the whole way at an angle. Uh, the, now the old-fashioned way of doing a, a work is to find the length of this, find the magnitude of the force, find the magnitude of the, of the displacement, and then find the angle between them. That would take us uh, the next 20 minutes. So here's a fast way, it's called stack and molt. So it doesn't matter what order you do on stack and molt, I got negative 5i plus 7j newtons. That's my force and I'm going to dot that. It's called a scalar product in physics or a dot product in math. I'm going to dot that with my position and also this is sometimes called an r vector. Uh, you see a lot, of, a lot of different ways of saying it. I try and show you different versions so whatever your textbook in college does meters and that's my stack and now I just molt. Now when you molt, uh, you could foil it. You'll find, remember the i dot j will always cancel because i is in this way, j is this way, cosine 90, they'll always go to zero. Uh, j dot i for the same reason will always go to zero so you get rid of those so the foil becomes fluff uh, or that's why I just stack a molt. i dot i, they both have a length of one, they're stacked on top of each other, the cosine of zero is one therefore those go away. So I've got negative 45 and that's going to be negative 28. When I put those together, 60, it's going to put me at, I didn't disagree with what I, yeah, it's, uh, it's negative 73, right? That should equal negative 73 newton meters. If I can add right, yeah, the negative 73 newton meters. And that's what I thought. I thought it'd be a negative work because if the force is opposing my change in direction or my change in, in position. There we go. Get rid of that. Okay, 55 minutes to go. Let's move this down. And okay, so number two. Uh, now we're going to do a graph. Your graph on the test will look similar to this. And so it's the area under the curve. Now notice that we are back, we're in negative position, but it says that the object's moving from negative 12 to positive 20. So the object's moving in that direction. Well, I don't care that I started at negative 12. If my direction of motion is this way, my delta x, my displacement is this way, that makes my displacement positive. My displacement is actually a total of 32, right? But now it's not quite the same. Um, I mean, you can't, the force is changing over time, kind of like what we're doing with Hooke's Law now. No, sorry, not over time. The force is changing over position. Uh, force changing over time is impulse. Remember that graph we did? This is force changing over position, which is work. Um, or force over, a, force over a change of position is work. So I have this area, and that's going to be positive because my force is positive. And this area, even though my displacement is positive, my force is negative. So that's going to be negative work. So I've got to find the area of this triangle and subtract from that the area of this trapezoid down here. But when I look at it, at first I think Askey ripped me off again because I, he didn't give me 
he didn't give me that value. But if you look at it closely, you see your six above here, six below there. Well, if that's if this is a line, that's got to be positive twelve. So ASCII actually uh, speaking to myself in the third person is kind of weird, but uh, the teacher uh, actually gave you a break because this will cancel and this will cancel. I'm not saying it's going to happen on the test, but in this problem I made up that happened to work out. So all I got to do is worry about this negative area here, and that's going to be from eight, and that's going to be negative six, so negative forty-eight newton meters of work. So in number one we did it with dot product and now in number two we're doing it with area. A lot of ways to come out of physics problem. Well let's look at three then. Ah, get that out of there. Three says so now, now it's a power problem because we're dealing with kilowatts so I know I'm dealing with power. So a 20 kilowatt motor uh, lifts a 3.4 megagram elevator at a steady speed through a height of 15 meters. How many seconds does it take? So we're going to assume no friction and we're going to be consistent to watch my units, so I'll be careful there. Well, um, all I really care about, this is the elevator being lifted, and all I really care about is uh, I can do this pretty straightforwardly with equations. Since power is work over time, they didn't give me a velocity here. If they gave me a velocity, I would have said power equals force times velocity. The other equation, daggone it, that's true. Hmm. Okay, uh, now if I have time, I might switch this question to a waterfall question like Niagara Falls. And if I do that, this is pretty, let, let me knock this out real quick, then I'll give you the possible uh, surprise, okay? Uh, this is 20 kilowatts, and I'm trying to find how many seconds, so I'm trying to solve for T. So T equals work over power. So T equals work. Well, work is force times distance, right? Force times displacement. So I have 3.4, but that's megagrams. So let's go ahead and, and put that in terms of kilograms. It's 3,400 kilograms times my change of position, which is 15 meters up and divide that by the power, which is 20 kilowatts, so that's 20,000 watts. Now when I, the watt is a newton per meter, so when you punch all that in, you'll get seconds. Uh, you can do that because a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and then you divide that by a meter, and you end up with seconds. You can prove that to yourself. Uh, and we end up with uh, 2.55, I think if my numbers are right. I did this earlier. And that's 2.55 seconds. So this thing is moving steadily, this elevator. And okay, that's about right. It takes two and a half seconds to go. Uh, you should always go back and look at the problem, make sure it makes sense. 15 meters, that's about 45 feet, so about four stories. If it's a high speed elevator, it could get past four. If it's already moving at, a, at its maximum speed, it could already it could get past four stories in two and a half seconds. Alright, so now, now let me tell you the possible surprise, if I have time, I don't have much time here, but uh, suppose that I get time uh, Wednesday night and I finish my taxes early, and I decide to go back and, and throw a little curveball at you, but you guys, since you're watching the video, uh, you will be in good shape. What if I throw the old Niagara Falls problem in there, okay, it comes down, it turns a generator, remember the equation we come up with on power this time, it was power equals m dot GH. And that should be a big P there, not little p. Because little p is, as we know, momentum. So it's power, power equals m dot GH. So if I give you a flow rate, and I give this, I think in the problem it was in gigagrams per second, but say I give it as, I don't know, megagrams per minute, or whatever, uh, I'll just make it per second. Let's say I say it's 4.4.0 megagrams per second is my flow rate. That's how much water is going back past or falling uh, past a certain point per second. That's the flow rate. And say, of course, G is 9.81 and uh, meters per second squared. I'm trying to hurry here because I'm low on time. And let's say it's falling from uh, 30 meters. Okay. Then I can take this, multiply those numbers out, and I would have what the power what the possible power would be for this hydroelectric dam or whatever it is, waterfall. All right. So perhaps I'm going to take this out 
and stick this in. I can do that because it's 10%. I can adjust 10%. It can be a surprise. But not to you because you're watching this. Those people that are just copying off you, they're going to get burned. Well, you know, that's the problem. If they weren't uh, willing to take the time to watch, that'll be our little secret. All right, let's go to four and five. Um, four, uh, let's, oh God, you guys hate these kind of problems. Four is this, where you have this uh, efficient lever, 80% efficient lever. A total length of six gives me an AMA of 0.6. You get all these kind of equations, and, one, and you're not going to get these on an equation sheet, because there's, I'll tell you what, I don't think it's any way I'll get an equation sheet to you in time. Um, no, I don't think it's going to happen. So we have to know a few of these little things to be able to work. We've worked them quite a bit now. Remember that uh, efficiency, sorry, remember that efficiency times IMA equals AMA. And so uh, that'll be needed here. Uh, it has an AMA of 0.6. Now remember, see my pivots on the end, so I know it's a second or a third class lever. Uh, but if the AMA is less than one, it has to be a third class lever, because third class levers do not, let me make sure this thing's on. Third class levers do not give you a, uh, third class levers do not give you a uh, force advantage, they give you a distance advantage. So if, it's, if that AMA is 0.6 and it's about 80% efficient, it's a third class lever, which means that I'm going to have an effort somewhere here and I'm going to have my load somewhere here or call it my resistance, whatever. It's something like that if it's a third class lever, okay? So let's go through and uh, using this formula, there's my 0.8. If I, if I can find my IMA, IMA is R in over R out, which is the same thing as distance in over distance out, and R being the radius as this thing turns. And so IMA is, this will be my R in, and this will be my R out. Okay? So let's go ahead and fill this in with what we got. Um, I'm trying to solve for, I'll just finish the picture. So I know the total length, I already know what the R out is. That R out is equal to six meters. And so I gotta find, looks like if I find my R in, I got it made. Okay. So let's go efficiency then, which is 0.8. You put that in, uh, you know, you put this in decimal form, times IMA, which is gonna be R in, which I'm trying to find, over six meters. There's my R out. Uh, and that equals my load over my effort. Um, oh, ha ha ha, they already gave us AMA, so that is my load over my effort. So I just punch in 0.60, okay? I don't need to know what the load or the, or the effort is because they gave me the ratio. So 0.60, so all I gotta do now is solve for RN, and I think, pull a Martha Stewart here, I think I've already done that. And it looks like that's 4.5. Rn equals 4.5 meters. So when you finish them, you just go up here and put 4.5 meters and you're done. Now you've shown. All right, let's go on to the next one. Uh, number five, if I push with a steady force of 600 newtons on a box up a 20 degree incline that is 75% efficient, what is the maximum newtons the box can weigh? Let's go ahead and clear the board, give me some space. All right, uh, change colors on you. So 20% incline, 20 degree incline, and 75% efficient, and a steady, I'm gonna push with 600 newtons. So 600 newtons, that's my input force, that's up the incline. So that's my effort, all right. Um, what is the maximum Newton's box of weight? So in other words, I want to know what my what is my load over here? What's my load? So I have this now it's an inclined plane, so I have IMA equals distance in over distance out. I mean, I'm not gonna pull the old Niagara Falls trick on this one. I mean it'll be these two kind of problems with numbers turned around. So change around. So um, if you I know it's a lot to memorize all the stupid formulas and all that. Uh, now I'm not saying it's going to be a third, it might be going to be a second class lever. 
uh, but it'll be a second or a third here. And this will definitely be an inclined plane. With It won't be 20 degrees, it'll be about 30 degrees. It'll be something different, right? So as long as you know these kind of formulas. I am A, distance in or distance out. Um, and I'm going to push 34 seconds. OK, so that times, this times efficiency is going to equal my load over my effort. Well, my, my load, what I'm trying to find is what is the maximum newtons of boxing weight? That's going to be my load. So I have load over 600. And uh, let's plug in more. Do I know anything else? You know, I'll, I'll be doggone. Well, okay, I know 75. I know that's my efficiency. But I don't know my distance in or my distance out. But I do know my ratio. Because remember, distance in is the hypotenuse. Distance out is the opposite side. Now, now you're going to go back to your trig. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, but I don't want that. I want hypotenuse over opposite. Well, what's the inverse of sine? Right, cosecant. So let's do it this way. That's going to be my IMA, be cosecant. So if I have, so what I'm looking for here is efficiency, which is 0.75 times cosecant of 20 degrees is going to equal my load which I'm trying to find ultimately, over 600 newtons, okay? So we touched on all this in class, um, but luckily you're watching this and, and it'll help you out. So the load ends up being 0 0.75 times cosine at 20 degrees times 600, 600 newtons, excuse me. And if my numbers are right, you should get 1316. Load should be 1316 newtons. And, uh, you know, God willing that I did this correct. I'm kind of rush through this sometimes. But um, if I'm wrong, I'm really, I mean, if you punch in these things and you don't get 13, 16, then I made a mistake. But I think that's right. Okay. That's the way to do it, though. Now, like I say, don't think that you can just copy this and then change the numbers. So maybe I'm asking you for the angle. Maybe I'm... But somewhere along those lines, I doubt I would do that. But maybe I'm asking you for the efficiency. Maybe I give you the load and I give you the effort. You know, but it'll be something. This equation will come into play. Okay. And here we go. Get that out of there. Let's keep going. Do 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 do. We need like a interlude. I just don't have time. I would do like a little music, play a little flashback with you or something, but these tapes only last an hour. So, now the, oh boy, now we got a compound machine, and this is a matter of chipping away. You just keep on chipping away. And so, uh, here we go. Uh, now, once again, yours will look similar, and if you look at it from, you look way back, and you probably think it's the same problem, but a lot of subtle differences. This guy, I'm trying, obviously, now I'm pulling, I know I'm not pulling up. You don't have to pull up on a pulley system. You can be pulling sideways. You can even be pulling down in some cases. So you don't have to be, like, you know, like in a pull, like in a, uh, uh, like window shades. I mean, that's sort of a pulley. Um, so you can be pulling down, you can be pulling sideways, you can be pulling up. Uh, but anyway, this one I'm pulling sideways on, but it's still, these are still load-bearing ropes. Now that's not, that gives me a, that's a, in this case, we don't really get a direction advantage unless it was easier to pull to the right somehow, but, but those are the only three load-bearing ropes. So IMA is three. I'm going to go through and first put in uh, all my IMAs, okay? Let's go back to blue. So IMA here is three. Let's just go, go through and do that first. And then you come along, and here's my wheel and axle. Now be careful, because the wheel is where the effort is, the axle is where the load is. Remember wheel or where the resistance is. Remember where, W-E-A-R. Wheel uh, is the effort, axle is resistance. It should be in your notebook. Well, um, looks like my effort here is the big one. Now, it may not be, it may not be the way it is on the test. I cannot say. Um, all right, so I'm pulling uh, this way, so my effort is here, my load is here, 
And so it's going to be the radius for a wheel and axle. It's the radius of the wheel uh, over the radius of the axle. So this is four. Get this out of there. This is four meters over one and a half. So we'd have to make it difficult. Four over one and a half is going to be 2.67. So 2.67 is my IMA there. Now let's go on to the next machine. This is going to be, it's going to way over here. Okay, this is going to be a lever, and it looks like my effort's there, my load's there. This is another third class lever. Um, and so, now here's where it gets a little tricky. Remember, it's the radius in over the radius out. Well, the radius in is 8. The radius out is not 2, it's all the way from the pivot, so the radius out is 10. So 0.8 is my IMA for this lever. Okay, now let's go down and look at this. This is obviously two load-bearing ropes, so 2 is the IMA on that. Well now, to get AMA, it's simply 3 times 0.85 here. It's 2.67 times 0.95 there. It's 0.8 times 0.9 there. It's 2 times 0.9 there, so I'll fill all those in. That's 2.55. You're getting a lot of points on this problem when you're just doing this kind of stuff. 2.53, uh, 0.72, and 1.8. Okay. Now, you're supposed to find what's the overall total IMA and total AMA. Well, total IMA, we just multiply our IMAs together. I'm going to multiply 3 times 2.67 times 0.8 times 2. I get 12.82. And on AMA, I'm going to multiply 2.5 times 2.53 times 0.72 times 1.8. I should get 8.36. And, you know, I'm hoping. I was, I think I had the, I had some, I had like the office on or something uh, when I was doing this. So, um, I, I need to be more careful. But I was trying to be careful. All right. Well, the, don't forget. Here's the question up here. It says how many pounds of how many pounds of load? Oops. How many pounds of load can you lift with an effort force of 200? Uh oh. 200 newtons. That's not good. Let me just change this real quick to how many newtons of load. I might give you a hint as to what the test was like. The test probably asking for pounds. But let's say how many newtons of load can you lift? And um, I didn't look. I didn't do it. Well, that's that's simple. It's easy though, because that's AMA. And so I said, okay, I'm going to use an AMA is 8.36, and 8.36 is load over effort. And so how many pounds of load? So I'm trying to find load using two. So I'm not pounds. Let's say newtons of load using 200 newtons of effort. So 8.36 times. 200, that's going to go up here, so what, 1600 and something, 1672, something like that, okay, and then let's go down to, and then another question is down here, don't forget this question, and this says how many feet of a pulley rope we have to pull out to get the load to rise 3 meters, well now we're dealing with IMA. So we get rid of this, and now we're dealing with IMA. All right, uh, and so IMA is 12.82, so we say, okay, that is distance in over distance out equals 12.82, and I want to I want to lift it three meters. So three meters, and the question is, what is my distance in? How many feet of rope do I have to pull out? That's the price you pay, right? So 3 times 12.82, and I didn't look, I didn't work it out here, but you're looking at 3 times 12 is 36. 3 times 0.8 is so about 38, 38 and a half, somewhere in there, uh, meters of rope you got to pull out. Okay, that's the price you pay. Oh, the price you pay. Oh, the price you pay. Well, you can't walk away from the price you pay. Well, I miss Springsteen in Tulsa, so. All right, now let's go on. 
old Springsteen song. Uh, now we're at 789. Things speed up a little bit. That was a complicated one. All oh, nasty little machines. We're done with that. It says complete this four pulley system. So I didn't show it on there. I didn't want to give too much away, but good grief, it says four pulleys there. So we got a we got a pulley. If it's four pulleys, you're gonna have big one, little one, little one, big one. Okay? If it's three pulleys, big one, little one, big one, you know, two pulleys, big one, big one, etc. Et uh, five pulleys, uh, big, medium, little little big okay uh, but anyway this says a uh, four pulley system that has an efficiency of 90 percent so 0 0.9 uh, and requires 200 newtons is my efficiency so it requires 200 newtons to lift a 900 newton load well this what we're trying to find is IMA so 0 0.9 times IMA is going to equal my AMA which it looks like load over effort 900 over 200 when you punch that in, you find out your IMA is going to be, I didn't show it, all right, so um, four, that's four and a half, right? Yeah, four and a half, and then four and a half divided by 0 0.9 makes it, uh, uh, divided by 0.9, so it makes it five. So my IMA equals five. Uh, I believe. So I need five, it means I need five load bearing ropes. So I got to find a way to manipulate these ropes so I get five. So it looks like I'm probably pulling up at the end. So if I start here, and this is where you do it in pencil, uh, only this is going to be pencil on this test. There, that's not it. That's wrong because that only gives me four load bearing ropes. So let's get rid of that. And let's start it here. I think it's where I started. Yeah. Remember, see the way I'm spiraling? I'm spiraling out and out and out. One, two, three, four, five. There it is. So I don't have a distance advantage. Didn't say I did, did it. And does not. In fact, it tells me it does not have a distance advantage. So a direction advantage. I'm sorry, direction advantage. So there you go. It looked like that. All right. Uh, filled in the boxes below with the amount of newtons of tension in each cable. Uh, this is going to be a complex pulley system. Ah, boy. This is the one where you go T, T. Uh, let me just give you a general idea. These are hard to find on the internet and they're hard to draw because without getting into a problem. Um, so, like, you know, this is one of those things where if you have a pulley here, you got that, you got that, and then you got some kind of load here, say it's 100 pounds, then you know it's going to be shared equally. But the trick is they always stick in some third rope that comes over here. Now that's going to be something else. It doesn't have to be T. Remember that. So this may come up and be attached over here and then pulled down. That's attached up there. Uh, and um, it's going to be hooked up to another one right here and come back around, hooked up to a wall right there. So. A lot of things like this can happen, but the key is do your T's, but start, like if it's in this case, you're going to say T, T, and then there's something else has to be given where you know that maybe you find out that that's going to be 2T right there, and that's 2T, uh, or maybe you see it's 3T uh, because there's some other force over here. And so that's the point is each rope, you want to color in your ropes, color them in a different color, you get some points for that. Um, and then you want to start at your, usually I start at the load and try to work my way up. Sometimes I'll find out, like in this case, since I change ropes, i got to go back and find out what this is telling me about that rope. All right, so with 30 minutes to go, i got a lot to cover. That's all I can say on that one. If you come in tomorrow, uh, which you probably won't see this until Tuesday night, but if you come in Wednesday at lunch or uh, uh, Thursday after school, maybe for a little bit, depends on my baseball game, and then Thursday morning, sorry, Wednesday after school, and uh, Thursday morning, I'll try and have some more with that. Now this one, uh, this is this with the pendulum. And let's move this up. Now here you have to give uh, all these pendulum drawing where you have to label the ZPL, the 
the UG Max, the UG Min, the K Max, the K Min. All right, so we did this. We talked about this on, I don't know which one it was, 5, 7, I think it was, where we had that. We filled in the boxes. Remember that? I'll try and get a key up on that sometime when I get a chance. Uh, if not, there are screenshots, you know, uh, about that. There should be. Okay, but that will probably be the last key I'll have up. Because the five eight on, we five eight's a reading. Five nine on, we're pretty much done in class, and all those are done by check screenshots. You can get those. Um, all right. So here, it start it starts here, it ends there. It goes through the equilibrium point here. That's the middle. We've been doing this now with Hooke's law. This is the same kind of stuff as Hooke's law. A pendulum and a spring are the same kind of deal. Uh, only now we have ZPL and all that. Remember ZPL. ZPL stands for zero potential level. That's the lowest point. You want to make that, that's where you're going to call gravity, the, the, uh, the uh, energy of gravity equal to zero. So zero potential level. So there it is. If that's the case, then UG min will always be at, Z, at ZPL. So there's my minimum. And this makes that my maximum, UG max, as well as this, so it's assuming at the same level. UG max, assuming there's no friction up here, so it ends up rising to the same level it started off at. Uh, so we got those three taken care of. Got it, got it, got it. K max, and that is uh, the maximum kinetic energy. We know there's no velocity on these endpoints as it's turning around, so obviously the K max is here through the bottom, and that's the same thing with springs. Remember, the velocity is the fastest uh, through the equilibrium. Get that out of there. K min, of course, would be zero here, where we're where we're turning around, no velocity. So K, so that's minimum kinetic energy. Since remember that, remember that U G equals M G H, and K equals one half M V squared in general. Now it says this is a little harder part. It says show, and I'm going to erase everything, and then show these last two. It says show where where the gravitational work demogravity is positive and work demogravity is negative. Remember, if gravity is speeding something up, if then it's doing positive work. If any force is speeding something up, it's doing positive work. If any force is slowing something down, it's doing negative work. All right? That's one way of looking at it. Well, the gravity is going to speed it up. Sorry, it's going to speed it up from here to here. So gravity all in here, that is where UG is positive. And then turn around, sure enough, it, what it, ta what it uh, gives, it takes away. So all in there, the work done by gravity is negative. Make sense? And I can see you also saying it this way, saying, well, I don't want to show that, because gravity only cares about where it starts and where it ends. It's a, it's a conserved force. So here you can say the work done by gravity is positive, and here as it's moving up, you can say the work done by gravity is negative. That's probably actually better, more accurate. But I'll take either one. Okay. Now, what else we got next? Oh, it says plot the x versus t for this mass. So, um, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So I want the x versus t. Well, this is x. That's x. Well, that's okay. If we're going to call that zero, I want to say that's x zero. And I didn't show you, but there's going to be a. And here's your equilibrium. Here's your x max. Here's your x min, or your x negative x max, what we want to call it. So if we start at x max, where this, this is going to be x max, and then this is negative x max. This thing is going to start at x max, work its way through zero, go to negative x max. We're only plotting half a cycle. And we did this, I think it was, yeah, this was on 5.7. So go back and look there. And we showed that that would be t over 4. That's a fourth of a cycle. It's a fourth of a, a complete cycle is to start here, swing over to there, swing back to where you began. That's your complete cycle. But a fourth of a cycle is from here down to equilibrium. Okay, at the ground state of this, which we call ground state 2 uh, from quantum. And then come back up, now you're at the, the second fourth, then the third fourth, then the fourth fourth. So we, 
we go through four phases, and, and we'll show the four phases tomorrow in class, on Tuesday in class, um, when we're talking about spring. Same idea though, springs and pendulums are ticking at the same time. So, x max, negative x max, zero, it's going to be cosine, right? It's a cosine function because you start off with an amplitude. Alright, it's cosine, cosine world. Yes, it is. 